significant branch of the state is not only supposed to be giving us law with clarity, law with which could be properly understood and implemented both. There is another feature of this system of parliamentary democracy and the legislations which we have, that the legislature is entitled to experiment also. And this is very significant. And the legislature is not supposed to be giving us always only and only the easiest solutions. There may be, there may be typical problems, there may be typical requirements. And addressing those typical requirements, there might be typical laws and the laws which legislature makes, and that is how the Supreme Court, while dealing with even uh, the constitutional amendments also, underscored way back in Keshwan and Bharti 73, that legislature is entitled to even experiment also. That particular experiment is, well, to, to address to, to cater to a particular need or to address to any particular requirement. When it comes to implementation, when it comes to making it sure that the law, even that particular experiment, well, turns out to be well, fruitful enough for the society, the other branches, the executive and the judiciary, have their unique roles to play. Apart that, the constitutional courts are entitled to then examine the validity of that particular experiment, if I can say so, uh, to, to examine whether that fits in the scheme of the constitution or not. If that ex experiment well contradicts the constitution or it is impermissible, it goes out. But if it is there, but that it comes to execution of it, it comes to implementation of it, the executive and the judiciary both have their roles, judiciary means all tribunals included in that, any adjudicatory mechanism included in that. There we have our responsibilities. We need to, for that matter, we are talking in particularly in reference to the tribunal. We need to, the executive also needs to remind itself, be sure about what is needed of it, what is required to be done by it. And of course, the tribunal, the court, the adjudicatory process, the mechanism is also to make sure that whatever is expected by this particular law, or if I can say so, experiment, well, that ultimately leads to the society's good. For that matter, so far as the executive branch is concerned, I wanted to underscore a particular factor, and that relates to the litigation policy of the government. There had been several discussions made when uh, certain uh, recommendations were made for the well, expansion of the judicial infrastructures or from all angles and different areas were being well attended at. It included the, 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 the physical infrastructure, the training programs, uh, providing for well, different facilities, even, even the experiments Something like the morning, evening courts also were being discussed. In that process, litigation policies were discussed and not only discussed, they were put in place. The litigation policies do exist. The point is, particularly for our executive branch, to cautiously take note of what is expected of that litigation policy and make it sure that that litigation policy doesn't remain just a matter of letter, but well, it becomes a lively spirit. When we talk of well, backlogs or the pendency, this is the, 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 the efforts, as uh, I was noticing, uh, the, the, both the boards, um, the CBDT or CBA, I see, they had been uh, 
giving directions to their field formations also. Well, several of the do's and don'ts, particularly, particularly addressing, say, like, well, not going ahead with the, uh, with the litigation having low tax effect. But friends, and particularly uh, the executive as a whole, but merely doing away with a few of the low, low tax effect matters will not be yielding those results which we are looking at. There, when we look at our litigation policies, well, we have to make those commitments there and the, particularly the mandates there that the government, government as a whole, to whatever branch, wherever, in whatever manner you are looking at, has to become, has to project itself and has to behave in and has to deal with the things as a responsible litigant rather than being a compulsive litigant. That these are the expressions I am taking up from your policies only and your uh, commitments only. When we look at the things from an angle where the executive would not be well, projecting itself or would not be dealing with the things as a compulsive litigant that, oh, let us leave it ultimately to the tribunal or to the court. The things are going to take a different shape. A responsible litigant doesn't mean that it would simply be curtailing on or simply be avoiding litigation. I would repeat, if it is civic society, the disputes of the individuals and the dispute of uh, dispute with the government are bound to come up, and they have been existing. Uh, they, they, the, the, so far as disputes are concerned, they are an integral part of a civic society. And even in the yester years, Katya and Smriti also, if you look at, well, we will find that even in those years where, as such, the statutory law was not there, but whatever was available from Shrutis and Smritis, the courts of different categories were placed even in those areas where, where the specialized well, court systems, specialized justice delivery systems always existed, whether it were the courts of Kul, that is the, you can equate them with the family courts, where, where the elders or the learned persons of the family were constituting those cool courts. They, they, were, they were courts of Shreni, Shreni courts where, where the persons of the same trade were, were dealing with and settling their disputes. You can equate them with something, some, somebody akin, something akin to the arbitral tribunals of the same trade of today. Uh, the Gun court, the Gana court, which was uh, the village court, you can equate them with your panchayat courts. And then uh, thereafter, the courts, whether they were Adhikrata court, or they were Shashit courts, or they were Nrap, ultimately the sovereign himself. These categories, the, every uh, civic system has provided for different categorization of, different category of courts, hierarchy also, and well, different areas of attendance also. So, the courts are, the adjudicatory mechanism is an integral part of uh, our uh, society. And uh, well, we have come down, we are a long way now with uh, uh, these uh, specialized courts and tribunals being in place. Such it is a classic example of that. Coming back to what I was saying, that since the government is the biggest stakeholder, Rather than compulsive litigate, litigant, if there is an approach of being a responsible litigant, well, the things would take, uh, they, they have started taking shapes, they would take yet better shapes for that matter. When we talk of any of the statutes which are in operation and which are dealt with by the tribunal, there are two aspects. A show cause notice, if it has been issued by an adjudicatory body, adjudicatory authority of, of whatever 
level it is or whatever name you call it. It's not necessary that a show cause notice, even when a cause is shown, responded to, should always result in an order where upholding the show cause notice. There could be, there could be reasons, there could be, there could be, eventually there could be possibilities that that show cause notice may be required to be withdrawn too. I'm not saying that in particular, every case where we approach it from the point of view of withdrawing or upholding. Because when you start with dealing with a, a, a response to the show cause notice by the individual, well, the response has to be neutral to start with. And then if an order is passed, an order is passed which carries its logics and its reasons too, well, the things will start easing better. Simultaneously with uh, when we talk of, when we indicate to the executive that they should, they should be, approach should be more of a responsible litigant. When we come to adjudicatory mechanisms, we, the courts, the tribunals, or any adjudicatory body, here, the responsibility and the onus is equally well greater and, and, and equally serious and equally has to be understood in the sense uh, that when uh, we have tribunal in place like uh, great tribunal like Sestet, 40 glorious years uh, we are celebrating today and I'm sure <laughs> will march better ahead uh, from this time onwards. I'm not, I'm not indicating about what has been done, including the digitization, well, proper um, uh, ease of filing also, ease of presentation of the matter also, and the uh, um, availability of video conferencing facilities. These all are most welcome. These all are needed. These all are the, are advancements and we are integrating them with our justice delivery system as it will rightly indicated we know it I was also a party to that uh, development in Allahabad High Court when brother justice Dilip Gupta uh, uh, for all practical purposes single-handedly dealt with the digitization of the largest high court of Asia uh, in a very effective manner. I'm very sure this all is being done. Now, proceeding ahead from that, availability of all resources, proceeding ahead from that, there's something seriously needed from all of us, particularly dealing in the tribunal, that when we expect the, the, the biggest litigant to be rather than compulsive but being a responsible litigant. The decisions in the tribunal are required to be ensured, required to be en ensured in the manner that the tribunal or the adjudicatory body or the judgment that being delivered is delivered as if it is the last court and as if it is the last recourse and there won't be anything available further to that. That approach changes, friends, for the reason that when we imbibe those requirements of responsibility that whatever is being delivered here well, that may be the last word or the last say. Well, before delivery of the judgment or before asking even a question also, we ask ourselves whether that question is relevant and whether that question is going to lead us to uh, deliver a final verdict, which is final not only in terms of disposal, but in terms of delivery of justice also. So ensuring finality of delivery of justice is a requirement which we, we need to rededicate 
these days, uh, these kind of days, like the 40th anniversary days, we need to rededicate ourselves. That, well, the whatever is the decision is being rendered, we assume it to be. And that is what the concept has been. That is what, that is how the tribunals have been conceived, basically. That these are the specialized well, tribunals, the special way of doing things, a speedy way of doing things. Speed and special well, should bring about finality, more clarity and more finality and more logic if we provide in uh, our decisions. And that is where, uh, when we are dealing with uh, the specialized areas, uh, like the subjects which are being dealt with by the tribunal, and uh, rightly indicated by Brother Justice Verma, that, well, uh, it's uh, significant to notice and it gives an immense sense of satisfaction and a pride to all of us to see that the members drawn from well, legit, the, uh, ju the judicial branch of uh, one side and the executive branch of the other side, they are amalgamated together and then uh, the whatever is delivered. I am very sure that when we apply ourselves a bit extra as, is, as we expect a constitutional court to apply, I am very sure that a judgment of the tribunal with all its clarity and bringing about finality of the decision making is going to go a long way in reducing the errors or the backlog as we talk about because one clearer judgment, well, it's a guiding light not only for the tribunal but even for the executive also for even for the learned members of the bar also to give proper opinions also and the advices also. So that is where, and I'm, as uh, we notice, uh, more efforts are being put. We find uh, laborious, industrious judgments being delivered by SESTED. Uh, timely you know, decisions also being rendered. What is needed is that, well, Experiments are likely to come up. We do not know what tomorrow legislation may give us something more to work at. But we all are capable of well um, dealing with any kind of a dispute or a decision-making requirement which comes to the tribunal. Our efforts continuously have to be that well our decisions are delivered in the manner where there is a clarity so far as the stakeholders are concerned, be it the government, be it the Indians well. And for that matter, well, if, even when it, a matter goes to a higher court by way of a institutory appeal or by way of any other mechanism or by way of any other methodology also, at least there is no doubt remaining, no doubt remaining so far as the logic and the conclusion of the decisions are concerned.